And this looks a little bit different than yours. This is from my teacher um, grade book, uh, but it, the, it's going to be exactly the same idea. So we're going to click on the activity. And here it is. It says refugee camp summary presentation. So again, you're going to create a four side PowerPoint presentations about refugees and refugees camp refugee camps. And the assignment is actually broken down for you. It tells you exactly what you need on each slide. So on slide one, you want a title slide and your name. And I'm going to show you an example at the very end of this um, of a student who did a very good presentation so that you can have a great model and example so that when you come across this assignment, if you get stuck, you could reference that model. Don't use the information because I'll know, um, but you're more than welcome to use uh, that as a model. So for slide two, you're going to need information on the Yida refugee camp in South Sudan. Um, and you're going to need to answer these questions on your slide. Who are the refugees in this camp? What events caused them to flee their home country? And you need to include a map of where the Yida refugee camp is located and one image of what life is like in the camp. So you're going to need to answer, it looks like, two questions, and you're going to need two images, a map and an image of what life is like in the camp. On slide three, you're going to need information on uh, the refugee camp in Tunisia. Who are the refugees in this camp? What events caused them to flee their home country? So the same questions, just for a different type of refugee. And you're going to need a map as well as an image. So very similar information or, or questions. You're just, your information is going to be different because they are different camps in different countries that have different people in them. And then slide four is going to be your summary slide. So you presented information about the refugee camps and then you got to summarize. You need to answer the questions. What are some of the reasons that people flee their home countries to live in refugee camps? So why did, the, why did some of these people have to leave their homes and what is life like in some of these refugee camps? Um, the last question is a personal opinion. Do you think that nations like the United States have an obligation to help refugees? And you need to explain why or why not. So that, those are the assignment instructions. You have it all laid out before you, exactly what you need to do. All right, before you start, make sure that you do the following. And this is true for, for any activity. Um, Make sure that you have read all of the lessons in the unit that you are going to. So this, this assignment is in unit three, which is 3.5.1, it's unit three. Make sure you've read all the lessons in unit three, in the unit that that assignment refers to. Focus, especially on these lessons and activities. 3.3, genocide in Sudan, 3.3.1, 3.4, .3 .3 .4, 3.4.1 and 3.5. I'm not going to read them all off. I know you can read. Um, and I also know that you'll have access to these slides later. So make sure that you're focusing on these lessons and activities that you have, should have already done in particular. Okay. Before starting an, on an, any assignment, you should also read the assignment instructions several times and ask yourself the following. So assignment instructions, they might be clear as clear as glass to you. They might be foggy and you're, you might need to read them several times. I don't know how many of you ever put furniture together or read an instruction manual and I never get it the first time usually. I mean, if I do, I'm like, I'm a genius. Um, but usually it takes a couple of times to read an instruction manual. And the same thing for assignments. Assignments are like instruction manuals. You need to read them several times and you need to ask yourself the following. Do I understand the instructions? What if you don't? What if you don't understand the instructions? Guess what? Read them again. If you still don't understand after a couple of times or like three times, then it's time to contact your teacher. So make sure that you contact your teacher if you do not understand assignment instructions. If you're waiting for them to answer you, you can probably move on to the next lesson and then come back to that lesson once, once your teacher has responded. Um, ask yourself, do I understand the lesson? So what if you don't read the lesson over again? Same thing as the instructions. Read and reread. I have to do it all the time. I'm working on my master's program. I have to do it all the time. I, when I read books, 
there are several occasions I have to read a paragraph over a few times because I just, my mind's either wandering or I'm just not understanding it. What is required of me for this assignment? So I know for this assignment, okay, I have to have a presentation. It has to be four slides and there's some questions I have to answer. So think about that. What is required for this assignment? Um, how much do I need to write for in this one? It's a slide count. You need four slides. Uh, maybe it's an essay. I need four paragraphs. So make sure you know how much you're needing um, to write. And do I need to do research? Usually an assignment will tell you if you need to conduct research. Otherwise, information will be found in the lessons. So remember that if we're not if you're not asked to do research, you don't have to. Um, you're going to find it in the lessons. That's a nice thing. It's the beauty of online classes is most of what you're learning is like a book. It's, it's from a book and the book just happens to be online. You just flip to that page and there it is. Um, if for some reason you feel like you need just some more information um, because you personally feel like you need to understand the lesson a little bit better and let's say your teacher's not online, um, then that's fine. You can look at you can look at clarifying information online. You can, you know, look up, okay, the Yiddah refugee camp. That's fine. Um, totally okay. Just try, I would try not to, and I definitely would not ever copy and paste. Um, otherwise, you'll be asked to redo something. But at least you can get a good understanding of the topic that way by researching it online. All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this assignment together. Um, feel free on your end if, you know, you're ready to do this assignment or if you feel like, okay, I, I think I can do this. I, I, I haven't read through everything yet, um, but maybe I can at least start my slides, like outline my slides. Uh, feel free to do that as we go along. I think this is the nice thing about these study sessions is a lot of them actually have um, assignments that you can do immediately. So we're going to take notes from the reading. That's step one. And then we're actually going to complete the presentation. We're not going to do it, but I'm going to show you what it looks, what it, a completed presentation looks like. So, on my screen, you should see um, a Word document that says notes. If you do not see that, please let me know right away through audio. Um, what you should do is copy and paste the questions that you need to answer from your assignment onto a Word document. So I've already have done that here. I went to the class, I took the assignment instructions, I copied and pasted them. Um, that way, as I look for answers, I can type things at the same time. So I don't need to type up, it says slide one right here, slide one, title slide and your name. I don't need to type that up. Once we create the presentation, we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll move on to slide two. Um, you need information on the Yiddah refugee camp in South Sudan. You need to review the following. You, for this refugee camp in particular, 3.3 and 3.3.1. So it asks you, who are the refugees in this camp? What events cause them to flee their home country? Include a map and include one image. So who are the refugees in this camp? Okay, I'm going to make pretend I'm a student. I'm completing this assignment. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to my class. And I'm going to read over Genocide in Sudan, which talks about um, the Nuba. Actually, if we look at mapping, uh, Lesson 3.5 mapping, it actually tells you Yida refugee camp, um, the Nuba people, mountain people were affected. Um, the Rabuni Sawari refugee camp, uh, affected people are the Western Sahara peoples um, and the Dolo refugee camp are the Somali people. So if you need help, you're like, oh, I don't know which one the Yiddas are, um, make sure that you review 3.5.1 again if you haven't already reviewed it. It tells you that it is a Nuba in the Yidda refugee camp. So I'm going to read through here and I'm going to also review 3.3.1, watch the video if I have to. These tell you who they are and why they fled their home countries. I can look right here and say, uh, and look, all right, Sudan entered a civil war. So you know that there is a civil war involved and people fleeing their nation um, and fleeing violence. I, I, I don't want to find the information for you, but I'm at least pointing you in the right direction. And your job is to basically just read it and to rewrite it in your own words. Do not copy and paste. Always rewrite things in your own words. Okay. 
So you need to include a map and an image. So again, for the map, you're going to review 3.5. And here you go. You have a map right there. This is a Google map. Um, it does say that you have to insert a map. So you can do a couple of things. You can either go online and find an image, just type in Yidda refugee camp, or if you are very tech savvy and you have on your computer a tool, it's called snipping and you can look for it. So if you look in, if you type in your search button um, in your search bar, like I am here in the bottom left-hand corner and I do, let's see, I type in snipping tool. My computer's running a little slow right now, but There it is, their snipping tool. And you can decide to add that to your desktop. I already have, um, but if you wanna add that, this tool is actually pretty cool. It's kind of like a screenshot, but basically what you do is you click on the snipping tool. I have it here on my desktop. You click, click on new, and then I'm just going to select everything I wanna use and save this image file, save as, and you're going to save it as an image, and then you can just upload that image to your presentation. So the snipping option is one option in order to get this map in particular. And the other option is, of course, to go online and look for an image of the Yidda refugee camp map. If you click on maps, by the way, you're probably going to get a Google image. Um, or I mean, uh, uh, Google Maps image. So you don't want to do that if you don't know, if you don't have the snipping tool. So you can just make sure, here you go, this is the one I want, and you go through the saving process. And then you put it into your presentation. Okay. So that is for slide two. Slide three is the same exact process, except for you're then going to complete information for the Rabuni Sahawari refugee camp in Tunisia. And you're gonna answer the same questions. Same thing with the map. You need a map, um, you need an image, and you need to have who are the refugees in this camp and what events cause them to flee their country. So you need to, you need to review 3.4 and 3.4.1 in order to get information on the refugees in this camp. And to look at the map, if you want to do the snipping tool, then of course you go here to activity three or lesson 3.5 and you click on the map. And if that doesn't work for you, you can just um, find an image online of that map. Okay, so slide four is a summary. Pre it's the summary presentation slide and it asks you questions about why, what are some of the reasons that people flee their home countries? What is life like in the refugee camps? This is all from your reading and from your research. You can actually just answer this given that you've been told what life is like in some of these refugee camps in your lessons. Uh, you just fill in the blanks, you type it in. Um, that way, if you want to, just after you've done your research, you just copy and paste the information into your presentation, you can do that. And again, this last question is, do you think nations like the United States have an obligation to help refugees? You need to make sure that you explain why or why not. So it's a personal answer. Make sure you answer both parts of the question. Um, sorry, I did definitely skip something over here. What, what is life like in some of the refugee camps? make sure that you have already watched and maybe you need to watch it again. Activity 3.4.1, Life in a Refugee Camp. It is a video of a young man who is, whose life is on hold um, in a refugee camp. And let's see if we can access that. 3.4.1, it's called A Life on Hold, The Story of a Teenage Refugee. And so if you feel like you need more information on what's, what life is like in a refugee camp, watch this video again, take notes, and you can insert that information into your presentation. So regarding these questions, does anybody have any questions? 
feel free to unmute your audio if you do have a question or to send me a chat if you would rather um, ask questions through chat. And again, all of this information is going to be available to you um, after the recording. It, it takes a few hours for us to um, go ahead and change the recording in a format so that you can view it, but it should be available by the end of today. Um, and I can also send you these notes if you feel like you need help, you need these notes as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at a presentation. Oops, I have the wrong presentation here. Give me just a second. Okay. Okay, they have their slide one. Refugee camps is what they decided to title it and their name. Uh, don't put your initials. I just put their initials because I didn't want to say who's what student it was. I didn't want to give away their first and last name for privacy reasons, um, but make sure you have your title slide. And then they have their slide number two, which is about the Yiddah refugee camp in South Sudan. They have a map. Um, if you could, if you can't see this, please let me know. There's a map on the left hand side and there's a picture of what life is like in the camp on the right. Um, the South Sudanese, the student says, have taken refuge at the Yiddah refugee camp. Fighting occurred in Sudan between the government and the citizens in the Nuba Mountains. So it's really simple. You don't need that much information. The thing about presentations, unless it asks you, presentations are usually very short. Um, they're not very long. If you're giving a real presentation in life, you're using a presentation kind of like it's a note card. If, if you remember, if you're old enough to remember in the old school days, you would have to use note cards. Um, before we had visual presentations, you would just go up and you'd give um, an oral presentation and you'd have like, you know, some pictures or you'd have um, some kind of backdrop um, in front of you or sorry, in back of you. Um, but this has basically taken the place of a note card. Some classes are going to ask you for way more information. Some assignments are, so just make sure that you review what's required in each slide. But for this one in particular, it's very basic. One to two sentences is fine, so long as you are able to fully answer the question. Slide number three is the Rabuni um, Sahrawi Sar refugee camp in Tunisia. And for this camp, a student has said there's 165,000 refugees that reside here, and they are tribal people who lived in the Western Sahara Desert. There was violence between them and the Moroccans after Morocco took over their territory. So they were ousted, there was violence, people fled their nation, um, or their homes, and they ended up in these refugee camps. And again, there is an image of what life is like in the refugee camp, and there is also a map. And of course, their summary presentation or their summary slide. This is slide number four. This person says that some reasons that people flee their homes um, are because of war, violence between groups, and um, maybe a lack of vegetation or those harsh climates like drought. Um, you'll see this pretty often in a lot of Northern African nations where there's drought um, and people have to flee their homes. Um, Life in, in some refugee camps is hard for many. People have to put their lives on hold, and I like how they used on hold from the video, uh, until they can flee to a, a, an inhabited, thriving country with better shelter and vegetation. So there, these refugee camps, um, the student is saying, they go there for safety and for shelter, but people can, if conditions allow, they return home. Um, that's not the case, unfortunately, in many of these uh, examples. Um, or they move to another country with, uh, for a better life. And then the, the student gives their personal opinion. In the, this is their third 
this is the answer to the third question, which is, I think the United States should have an obligation to help refugees because there needs to be a there needs to be uh, there need to be reliable countries around the world that know how to support their citizens in case of emergencies, for instance, war. This is your personal opinion. I have had plenty of students say that they do not feel that it is the United States obligation. Um, maybe they say they feel like it's a global obligation. It needs to be all nations, or maybe they just have said that we need to focus on our own problems here at home. We have enough you know, of our own refugees, really, um, if you think about it, to deal with. So this is all personal. You're not being graded on your opinion. You're being graded on whether you answered the question or not. That is the end of their presentation. Anybody have questions about this, about their presentation in particular? Again, feel free to unmute yourselves or to send questions through the chat box. Okay, um, before, before you submit your work, always review it. Um, I've had a lot of students and I totally understand if you are in a hurry, it's the last day of the week and things are due at midnight and it, or things are due at 11.59 p.m. and it's 11.58, I totally get it. Uh, but for those of you who, have, who are working ahead of time, make sure that you submit your, or that when you submit, before you submit your work that you read over and you edit it. Um, and this is true for presentations as well, not just for papers. You can have somebody edit it for you too. If you feel like I've just been looking at this for too long, I can't see clearly, I can't see straight, have somebody else look at it. Having, learning um, to accept constructive criticism, so criticism that helps you to grow, uh, is very important. Is very important. I, I know sometimes that I am shy about my own work and I, I'm like, oh, I can do this myself, but it really does help to have a set of, of fresh eyes on something. Um, check to see if it makes sense. And of course, check for spelling and punctuation errors. Always edit your work. And last but not least, read the instructions again to make sure you included everything. So you, did you have your images? Did you have four slides? Did you answer all of the questions? Read the instructions one last time before you submit your work. All right, um, time for questions. What questions do you have about this activity? Um, for example, how many slides do I need? Uh, what other types of study sessions would you like to see in the future for this class and for social uh, studies classes? Do you have questions about any other classes? And um, if we have time, we'll look at some other th things like how to check chats, grades, feedback, if you have questions about your dashboard. So go ahead and take this minute, take a minute or two to think about questions that you have about the activity, about study sessions in general, comments, um, what have you. So use the, uh, feel free to use audio or again, use the chat system. And for the, sorry, for those of you who came in um, after we started, uh, feel free to actually please send me a chat that has your first and your last name so that I can apply this extra credit for you to your class. Thank you, Annie. Okay, you, you, you all do not have to leave yet. I'm gonna go over a couple of things on the dashboard um, if you wanna stick around because uh, we have about five more minutes after this. And so I figure this is a good time to learn how to use your chat from your chat board, how to look at your grade book, um, things like that. But contact me here or from your class if you need more help um, or if you want a copy of any of the slides. I have provided here a link for you um, if you would like this link sent to you through the chat system in your class, feel free to let me know. Um, but this link takes you to videos. This video will be up again. It should be up later today. If it's not later, up later today, more than likely on Monday. Um, but it does 
take you to a YouTube channel that we have created for your classes. And actually, you know what, let's just visit that now. Um, all the study sessions that we have for math, science, English, social studies, these are all being uploaded to, uh, it's called the Teacher Mentor website. And there's a lot of them. Luckily, they're organized, but for some reason, I don't think they're organized correctly. If you go to playlists, um, you can look and see there's English, science, math. Um, for some reason, there's only one social studies, but I know there's more. For example, um, last week we did how to post a discussion, so how to do a discussion post in U.S. government. Um, so if you're taking U.S. government and you're stuck on an assignment, um, this one has how to how to do that. It also has how to submit, uh, or sorry, how to complete assignment 7.4.1. Um, let's see here. There's information on plagiarism from English classes. There's creating a presentation. So if you do not know how to create a presentation, um, that is something that I covered a few weeks ago in U.S. government as well. So that'll teach you how to use Google Slides, PowerPoint, as well as OpenOffice. Um, and U.S. history note-taking uh, note-taking tips and tricks. So how to study for U.S. history class, how to take notes, um, how, to how to complete the readings basically. So if you're any of those classes, very helpful. And of course, English, science, math, they're all on here. So feel free to visit that channel anytime. Okay, so that is it again. Um, thank you so much for attending. If you want to stick around for a couple more minutes, I'm going to go over how to uh, look at your dashboard, how to look at grades, chats, feedback. Otherwise, have a fantastic weekend, and we will hopefully see you at the next study session. Okay, for those of you sticking around for, oh, we have a chat. Ah, thank you very much. That's a, that's a very sweet, very kind um, comment. And yes, I look forward to having you in the next one. You keep, you keep me on my toes and you keep me in check. So thank you so much. Okay, for those of you who um, are not familiar with the chat option from your class, it's really important that you learn this. I like to do this in every single study session that I have because every time someone tells me I had no idea that there was a chat option that I could chat with my teachers and my academic coaches from my class and from my dashboard. So basically, if you're here on your dashboard, on your screen, you should see me on a dashboard. If for some reason you can't see that, let me know. Uh, but let's say um, I want to send a chat to... Sorry, that is my dog in the background. Um, to Aaron Schaefer, who's your teacher, you just click on our name and then on this chat bubble here. Actually, I believe you have to go in the class now. Um, click on ES contact details or ES contact details. You can send an email from here or you can send a chat message. Hmm, for some reason it is not working for me, but should work for you. You should be able to send a chat message. I don't know if it's because it, well, the teacher, even if the teacher's on, online, you should be able to access that. Let me try a different class. Yeah, I think there is something wrong with my computer right now. Um, this is how you would send a chat message. Let me try from another class. It's one last time, but this is how you do it. You just click on contact details and then click on the bubble here. Okay, what would happen is a chat box would appear here on the right hand side um, and you would be able to send your teacher chat that way. If you click on messages over here in the upper right hand corner, um, you'll see messages that are coming in. Uh, in particular, it gives you feedback. You can see all of the feedback that is sent to you from your teachers. And then any course announcements will also appear here. Um, career services has an announcement. Study session has an announcement. Meet the teacher. Um, so you can do that.
when you're in your classes, a lot of students do not know about this feature. There's the hide completed feature. So if you don't want to see every single thing in week one and you just want to see the assignments you completed, you can just click on that and that will take you to um, just the assignments that you completed. If you want to see everything, then you can do that as well. Um, feedback. If you want to read feedback, you can just click on an assignment. And you can see that there's feedback on this. Just click on the I button and scroll down and you can see feedback from your teacher. So if you got a low grade, um, then you want to know how to improve it, your teacher will tell you that. It's just nice to be able to see that you do have feedback. The chat bubble will always appear next to anything that you see feedback on. All right, so those are just uh, tips and tricks from your dashboard. Again, thank you again for attending the study session every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. We have a social studies, a course specific um, social studies study session, but you are free to join I'd be more than happy to answer questions uh, regarding the class that you are in. Have a great weekend, everybody. This is the end of the meeting, end of the recording. Bye-bye.